Welcome to The Daily Wrap-Up, a concise show dedicated to bringing you the most relevant independent news as we see it from the last 24 hours. Friday, June 19th, 2020. Thank you for joining me today. It will actually be a little bit of a shorter show today. I just have a couple of, th- I wasn't actually even planning on doing something today. I was going to try to rest up, but I, somebody sent this to me and I really just had to bring this thing to you that I've really felt bolstered everything that we've already been talking about. Something I know you will all find very, very interesting. And you know me, I'm not one to hide things. I put it right in the title. So you guys can already see what's coming your way. But this is a really big, this is an interesting aspect of something that we've already been kind of circling around, right? Who benefits? Who profits? And just because somebody's profiting doesn't mean that they're necessarily, it's a nefarious action or that they're a criminal, right? Just because somebody is a good investor doesn't make them a criminal. However, with everything else going on around this story and all the obvious insider actions happening that led to this point, we have to ask whether or not this was all part of it to begin with. And of course, this is in regard to BlackRock and investments in none other than 3M, the mask company respirators, right? The, the very thing that seemed to be the focal point of everything going on right now. Well, we're going to talk about that today. A little bit more to end today about what's going on with annexation in Israel, because that is a very big deal right now. No one seems to be talking about it, but I continue to try to keep up on these things for you. But as well as a really alarming thing that you guys have, might not have seen yet, which was the main image today. The whole contact tracing aspect has gone mainstream, it would seem, if it already hasn't. The NBA is now going to be wearing these things, apparently, and we're going to go over why it's very alarming and why it's exactly what we told you was always coming. And it's tied in with everything else we've been pointing to, from artificial intelligence to social checkpoints to everything we've talked They're all trying to warn about that people say, oh, you're crazy, or, you know, I'll believe it when I see it. Well, it's here, guys. It's time to believe it because you're seeing it. There's no more There's no more point to be like, well, I'll wait and to see if they force it on us. Now, if you're going to wait until they're actually shoving something in your arm or actually forcing you to wear something to be able to enter life, well, <laughs> what do you think you're going to do in that moment when you've realized that it's happening? Well, too late now, right? Now is when we need to act. Now, I want to start today with a couple of quick notes that I want you guys to see what I'm seeing here. And this is a positive note in my opinion. Ah, this is, dang it, excuse me. This is a positive note, in my opinion, because what I'm seeing here and what I've continually been seeing, what I know that you guys hear me say over and over and over, we are not the minority. That's how I see it. I think there are far, far, far more people who are afraid to express their opinions for fear of being cast as a conspiracy theorist or a fringe or crazy or whatever will keep their opinions to themselves on social media, around their friends, because they are still lost to some degree in regard to who they think is the majority. The mainstream media will tell them, you're you're the minority, you're crazy if you think that. So they stay quiet. But I believe that most people out there to some degree are seeing this. Now that doesn't mean that there aren't people that are still slightly differing in political opinions. And you think because they have that one opinion, that means that they're not a way, that's... It's nuanced, guys. The reality is most people, in my opinion, are beginning to see the problem. We may differ on how to deal with it or what necessarily that problem entails, but we can see it. And this kind of tweet is an example that I really, this is one, I'm seeing this all over the place. And this is just, I don't even know who this person is. He's a writer, apparently, a writer, broadcaster, historian. The point is, he says, the BBC sounds more and more like a straight propaganda outlet. You don't say. Now, he says, it's lost all objectivity. It's quite worrying. Orwell got it completely. But there's something very disturbing going on. Where does a thinking person go for independent information? Who or what took over BBC? Well, here's the point. This is a guy who clearly has been watching BBC maybe his whole life. Very clearly supports it. Thinks that it is something that you should absolutely depend on. But just recently, he's seeing through it. Nothing's changed, guys. BBC is BBC. They're doing what they've always done. Same with Fox and CNN. They may be a little bit more ridiculous today because they're desperate, but that doesn't necessarily change somebody who's a lifelong supporter. People are waking up. We're seeing a paradigm change here. We are literally seeing people shake free of the comforting suffocation of this propaganda control mechanism. 
because it does. It makes you feel, oh, Yo, you know, you're 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 comfortable. You think things are well, but really, it's slowly suffocating you. This guy sees through it, and of course, Chris here says, "Hey, check these people out," and maybe he will. The point is, we're seeing this everywhere. People are beginning to see through the lies. There's shifts, changes happening everywhere, and this next one, I don't even know necessarily where to place. Before we get into this next point, the first point, the big point of the day, just consider, you tell me, what does this mean? Here is Donald Trump himself straight up saying Fox News is terrible. Of course, this is not because they did anything other than report polls that he feels are inaccurate, right? So it's not really about the fact that they're good or bad. It's because something happened he didn't agree with, right? But so that just shows you how quickly this can spin. So I feel like this is a manipulation to some degree, whether Trump is aware of it or not. Right? This is kind of the whole thing, like, you know, cutting you know, cutting off your nose to spite your face, right? Why would you attack the one group who seems to support you, even though I do agree there are plenty within Fox News that are, you know, may, are just kind of giving you the, the token anti-Trump, you know, talking points. But him, for Trump to come out and say this, I really don't know where I fit this in just yet, but realize that things are changing. There's a lot of moving parts here. At the end of the day, I think this shows you what I what we should have always been seeing. That essentially this is what it's always been. There is only one. There's only one group. There's only one entity that's trying to manipulate you while pretending you have choices. And this is the illusion kind of being, maybe Trump's only seeing it for the first time. Who knows? The point is that people are seeing it and they're trying to change things. They're trying to divide you more than ever. We need to constantly be vigilant about this. And I wanted to point out as well about Mike here. I don't, again, I don't know who this is. So take a moment. Reach out to him. Be kind. Say, hey, Mike, we were there. We've all been there at one point. We all had that moment when we realized we were lied to. Don't worry, you're not alone. Right? That's the, that's what we need to be doing. Not going out and saying, oh, you idiot, you're only just now realizing. Right? That's what's, been, that's what's become of a lot of this movement today. Even in regard to things like Black Lives Matter and, you know, like where somebody, say a white person, will come on and say, yeah, I agree, and here's why. You shut up. You're not allowed to talk about it, right? What does that do? Is this person trying to show solidarity and you shout them down because you don't think they have a right to speak? That's the problem today. Don't go to Mike and say you're stupid because you missed it. Go to him and say we're here for you, man, and we see it too. It's time to change something. Think about that. And extrapolate that out into your daily life and how you should conduct yourself around people who are just trying to live their lives and may just be fooled by everything going on. And all it takes is one moment for them to just realize that they've been fooled. And that's when you're there to say, hey, I'm here for you, man. What can I do for you? We were all there at one point. Now, we just were talking about BlackRock. The idea of what it is how dangerous it is, how alarming it is. And there's not, there's plenty more than just BlackRock, but in my opinion, it seems to be increasingly materializing into all roads lead back to BlackRock in a sense that whether or not they're the world's largest asset management group, that there's very insider nefarious things happening. And given those things seem to happen all over throughout American policy, politics, and corporate business and whatever. So that doesn't necessarily mean it ties directly to COVID-19, but I believe it does. And there's a lot of reasons why. And I've already shown you a lot of those in past shows. This one is the one I just did. COVID coup, the BlackRock takeover of American interests. Another one I hope you'll check out is the, is the one right down here is a clip. The BlackRock takeover of America brought to you by COVID-19. And there's one even before that. BlackRock's coronavirus bailout plan for the U.S. that was written before coronavirus began. Now, I'm not going to rehash all this stuff today, but I recommend you check these videos out. This one right here is in the show notes for you to read or listen to, watch. But I wanted to quickly just go over some of these so you realize it before we jump into this first point. Again, just remember that they were involved in 2008, the bailout. The, at the time, the largest transfer of wealth in American history. They stole that from you. They were involved before, involved with this right through the process, which I argue made it worse. And of course, then right after they did whatever they did, they wildly benefited and suddenly became the number one asset manager in the world right after 2008 collapse. Surely that benefited them. And we have the economic forum team that Trump put together in 2016. Names Jewish billionaire to head the economic advisory team. This was Steven Schwartzman. But this is actually the point of this was not to talk about him necessarily, but the fact that Fink, trying to just use this to show you here, nah, maybe not going to get to it, but Fink, I, I highlight Fink's name in this article right below this point. Well, Fink was also on this 
Fink, Larry Fink, is the CEO of BlackRock. So in 2016, Donald Trump tapped him, as well as many other people, on a 16-person team to advise them on form, uh, on economic policy going forward. Well, everything else, I mean, we, we, we also talked about the idea that Donald Trump's tax law was the, is the very, one of the primary reasons it surged them to $6 trillion in assets. And we know that this one, here we go. <laughs> Dang it. I'm trying to get to this one part right here. That they made a plan to bail out the U.S. government. Or rather just, you know, the, the collapsing on the American, U.S. economy before coronavirus began. All of these are very suspect things. But why, right? Well, I would argue that an easy example before I even get to the point if we're actually looking for a motive who benefits or why somebody might create something, even especially for those that think this is a complete massive hoax, which I think it's a hoax however you spin it, because even if there really is a virus, they're lying to us about it. It's still, they're still lying to you. It's still a hoax. They're still pretending it's something it's not, right? Maybe a stretch on the word hoax, but it is still essentially the same idea. We're being lied to. But even for those out there that feel that there's really nothing there, Do you, re do you really need a better reason than to essentially take control of the most powerful financial country in the world? The most militarily powerful country in the world to take control over their policy? I think that might fit the bill for creating a global pandemic, wouldn't you say? But that all that aside, if you want another motive, here you go. This was sent to me today. BlackRock listed twice, in fact, on this top top holders of stocks investments in 3M, which makes masks, right? We just talked about this. What is the one thing that seems to be the primary focus that it guarantee is making so much money they can't even see right now that is in regard to masks? Everyone needs them. Everyone's buying them everywhere. They're making new versions of it. There's new kinds. There's new styles. There's new pictures on them. It's, I mean, this is a booming industry all of a sudden, right? Even, but recognize before that it was still a very lucrative industry. Before this all happened, there was still medical purposes. There was still all kinds of reasons to need them overseas, right? Whatever. The bottom line is it wasn't a, it wasn't suspicious to invest in 3M when they did, and which was before this, right? But the point is, there's a profit motive. At the very least, before we even get into reasons why I think there's more nefarious things going on here, to have a company who's now driving the bus in regard to the U.S. financial policy have a clear profit motive in something that they're, I mean, does that not lean, do you think they're going to not make a choice that would make them another billion dollars if that was something that would happen? right? Even if that may be detrimental slightly to the American interest, maybe, right? Let's not pretend like a company like this isn't, that's not exactly what they do on a daily basis. But I find it very revealing, first of all, that we have BlackRock fund advisors and BlackRock investment management listed on two of the top holders of one of the companies making the most, I mean, 3M is the most, the primary company. And I'll even show you why more in a moment, but check this out as you go even further, not even just, even past the top holders. BlackRock is listed seven different times on the holders of 3M company. BlackRock Inst Institutional Trust Company, BlackRock Fund Advisors, BlackRock Group Limited, BlackRock Investment Management LLC, BlackRock Inc., BlackRock Advisors LLC, right? This seems totally legitimate. BlackRock Co Japan Company. I mean, I know BlackRock is the largest asset management company in the world, but why then would, they, I mean, I, I'm not going to get into that. Bottom line is, to make this very simple to understand, this is an obvious suspicious moment to realize that they are wildly in multifaceted, in multi, multiple ways invested in the leading company making the product that is clearly a huge profit motive in this whole thing. So you need to ask yourself whether this was something that they are involved in, driving, right? I mean, the same thing we should ask about the U.S. government or the Chinese government or anybody else. Why how can they benefit from the situation and would they push it forward? Well, yes, based on everything else we've seen, the fact that they made a plan about this before this all started, it seems that maybe they were just putting their pieces in the right places because they knew about something that we didn't. Just maybe. But on top of that, I didn't even know that 3M, the very company we're talking about, actually has a patent for the N95 respirator mask. The one thing that they're pushing, the one thing, it has to be N95, right? That's all we heard. Has to be. 
even though we now know that it's nonsense because these masks don't really do anything in regard to what we're talking about other than stopping spit from flying from your mouth onto somebody else. The idea that this is, it, the, the science behind that is pretty damn clear. Now, the point is, a patent for the N95, the one thing. So, we see a tie between the one company who has the one thing that they're clearly pushing, even though they know at the time that it wasn't really, and there, there was a reason for that. Why? That company is tied to BlackRock, which is heavily invested in 3M, which BlackRock is now driving the financial policy of the U.S. government. What do you know? I find that really hard to miss, guys. But either way, there's a profit motive, right? Aside from all of the speculation, we have a clear profit motive for what's driving this. Now, let me ask you this. If they know that this is going to be a very lucrative business, the whole masks, new normal, and all the stuff, especially what we're going to get into next, do you think that they would just, you know, let it go away? Or would they hold on to this and create the new normal and force you to buy masks and force you to have one with you at all times? It'll be the new the new yellow vest, right? It'll be the new thing you have to keep in your car all the time. Got to have a mask against the law if you don't. Make sure you got your tracking ring on. That's what we're going to get into next. Now, that in and of itself, we would argue for control and different things we've already talked about. But then you add on top the, the, billion, the millions of dollars, billions really, but millions in regard to this investment that's tied back to BlackRock and then back to the U.S. government. It's hard to miss. Now, I believe there was one other thing I was going to show before I got to those rings. I guess not. I just find it very, very revealing that when you find out the kind of investments that are happening here and the people involved, I do think I had something else I was going to show you that's frustrating, but oh well. This is what happens when you're not on your game and you're not sitting where you're normally sitting, but let's let's get into the next part. This part is very, very alarming to me. And this is what I keep trying to tell people, guys, is this is happening. This is not some we'll deal with it when it gets here thing. This is right now. And people are just saying, oh, it'll never be mandatory. Yeah, maybe they'll never actually say that. But does it matter if they tell you you have to, if it removes your, <laughs> if it removes you from society? If you can't fly, and you can't shop, and you can't go anywhere, your kids can't go to school? Yeah, that kind of does it for you, doesn't it? Well, guess what they're doing now is they're saying, well, the NBA players will be wearing them, right? Because here, here are our token millionaires that do what we say. So here, let's make them wear these. Then we'll make it seem like it's cool and normal to wear a tracking ring that can sense your body biometrics and tell you whether or not you're about to get sick. Yep, that's where this is going. They're going to be wearing this smart ring at Disney World per CNBC. Our or This is from NBA Central. The, the Aura smart ring is capable of predicting COVID-19 symptoms up to three days in advance with a 90% accuracy. I guess the 10% of the population that gets inaccurately, you know, injected with things and, and held on quarantine for 14 days. I guess we'll just take that in, in stride, right? For people that believe all of the lies that say, oh, of course, well, we have to because it's, it's deadly, right? But let's not forget that we already know the numbers are not what we were told. So this is not necessary, right? If you feel like you have to wear this for COVID-19, then why don't you wear one for the flu? It, it's pretty clear. Right, and they try. Oh no, it's way worse. Ten times worse than the flu. That's just not true. Right? They are hard, They are holding desperately on to the heightened numbers and heightened areas. And the reality is, as you broaden the situation out, it can get as low as 006 percent. That's a fact. That's just coming from the CDC. Generally, 026 percent. That is where we are. Right. So the flu, generally 0.1 at a normal year, it gets all the way up to about the same, if not more than 0.26% in a dangerous, serious year, sort of like we had right before this started. Which I know you know why I think that's what it was, but that's a different topic for today. I think something was going on there. I think it was starting before they told us it was starting all throughout the United States. This ring can measure body temperature, respiratory functions, heart rate. Now, as I said, so what happens when the resource officer who is called by your health app, which is connected to your smart ring, doesn't care that you have a very important meeting tomorrow and feel just fine. I'm sure he'll just agree that it must be that 10% air caveat, right? Medical pre-crime. I'm sure. No, no, it won't be your choice because it was never about choice, right? The ring is deciding. I mean, think, think about it like this. Think, remove the meeting. I mean, think about any other, think about what in your life right now, whoever's listening, whatever the, think about something that is the most paramount to you. It's absolutely important. 
And you're wearing this ring because you take your precautions and you wear your mask and you're not going to get sick, right? But suddenly the ring gives you some weird notification. You feel fine. You didn't even leave your house. You haven't even left. It must be that 10% error, but guess what? You're going to miss whatever that thing is that you need to do or that your child needs to do or that is like your job interview for the next thing that's going to, you know, pull you out of the hole that was created by this whole thing. It doesn't matter. And I'm just making up possible scenarios. All of that aside, this is wildly invasive, wildly unconstitutional based on something that we know is not necessary for this. Right? This is from their data. And again, as I keep pointing out, they were willing to remove everything you thought was... Your, they removed your life based on assumptions, estimates that were wildly wrong. Now, when you extrapolate the data out and actually get more research and actually do more investigation, well, those numbers come dramatically down. But guess what? They're not willing to give you your life back based on more accurate estimates. Does that not show you what you need to see? Right? It's logic, right? If estimates were enough to remove it, then estimates based on more data should be enough to give it back to you. But no, because it wasn't about any of that. It was about taking it. Whatever justification they could use. But here's the thing you should realize. Guess who is behind this ring? Well, here's an article. This is from April 8th. The WVU Rockefeller Neuroscience Institute and Aura, which is the name of the ring, Aura Health, unveil study to predict the outbreak of COVID-19. Okay, so the way they started this was saying, "Gay, hey, we're going to we're going to work onto a study." And remember this picture by the way. We're going to research this and a study about how to predict COVID-19. Well, that sounds nice and good, right? Sure. I'm being sarcastic, but the point is that what they want you to think was we're just going to make sure we can fight this. We're going to find ways to predict whether it's coming. They didn't say, "Oh, we're going to create some technological tracking device to stick on every person's arm in the world." And then we'll predict it, right? Not exactly what they sold it to you as, but guess that's exactly what they ended up doing, right? Remember, April 8th, right? Flash forward to today, same thing. Rockefeller Neuroscience Institute, AI-driven monitoring. Doesn't that sound lovely? Neuroscience Institute is applying its integrated neuroscience infrastructure, right? To rapidly deploy an innovative national study to understand the spread of COVID-19, okay? Understanding the spread, protecting your health and economy. RNI scientists have partnered with Aura to unveil a potential breakthrough by developing an artificial intelligence-driven model that can identify individuals before, before they become contagious. Medical pre-crime. How long have I been telling you this? Now, you can argue, I mean, let's just pretend that they work. Let's pretend that they work 100% of the time. Are you still pretending that there's not going to be somebody that would use this for nefarious purposes? I mean, of all governments in the world, the last person you should trust with something like this is the U.S. government. You're telling me that they wouldn't suddenly use this to manipulate and influence certain political parties or certain opponents or certain dissidents or arrest them or keep them quiet? Guys, our history in this country is rife with this stuff from Trump to Obama to Bush to the whole way back. They will use their power against the people who oppose their agenda. I mean, it's a ridiculous thing that we cannot see that this is who this government has been. They, that's how they've always done it. And artificial intelligence, guys. This is the point. This is what Whitney Webb has been talking about. This was the plan from a long time ago. They tried to push artificial intelligence about mass shootings. They tried to push artificial intelligence about terrorism. Right? It's on and on and on. They're just trying to use whatever's in front of them, and now they're scared to just enough. Now they're going to force it onto your ring or onto your hand. The Rockefeller Neuroscience Institute smartphone app goes beyond physical symptoms. Oh, doesn't that sound even better? And body temperature tracking through a holistic, God, holistic integrated neuroscience approach. Measuring daily ch uh, ch changes in physiology, psychology, cognitive and behavioral biometrics. Oh, good. So now they're going to be able to tell whether or not you're mentally sound. Because that totally makes you feel comfortable, right? Well, guess what? We think you're a little bit... We think you have what's called uh, oppositional defiance disorder where you, where you just don't listen to authority. Guys, that's an actual diagnosis. Think about how crazy that sounds. So somebody who does not want to listen to authority, who cares if they've lied about everything all the time? doesn't matter. Well, you don't trust authority. Well, you have oppositional defiance disorder. You have to get a drug and put you in, you know, holding just, for, just to make sure that you're safe. It's all about you. 
So this ring is not just about fighting COVID-19. Physiology, psychology, cognitive and behavioral, they are tracking every single thing about you. Sure, it's, a, it's I mean, think about the, you could always continue to say, well, it's just a choice, guys. But ask yourself, what, do you really, think about vaccines, a perfect analogy. Just like it was before, vaccines, okay, we'll give them to people who want them. If you want to keep yourself safe. Well, that very quickly became, well, we need masks. We need herd, mental, we need, uh, 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 now I'm blanking on the term, herd immunity. Right, that's why I've got to have herd immunity, right? Well, sudden, so what changed? All of a sudden, it was no, it's not. You have, you can do it if you want to. You can have exemptions. Well, now suddenly, it's what well, we need to get herd immunity, or it doesn't matter. So now we're going to remove religious exemptions, which I already showed you are happening. There are places that are already doing that. Same thing here. So, what do you think is going? So, if you get forty people in the country wearing these rings, what do you think that's going to do for anybody? Under the guise of what they claiming it will do. I argue that nobody should accept this, but the point is they need the majority. Otherwise, this doesn't do anything. It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't actually function. So don't lie to yourself and be naive and pretend this won't end up being forced on you in one way or another. Whether they tell you you have to wear it or you have to have it to work at a certain job or you have to have it to enter certain areas or you have to have it to be able to fly or shop or blah, blah, blah. Because, well, the safety of the mass is outweigh the safety of the few. I mean, this is where we are. None of us are safe until all of us are safe, right? This is what they're building. I just don't know why people cannot see it. Holistic. Again, the idea that they're trying to use... They, now, for, just to be clear, that's not actually an incorrect use of the word, but the point is it's, it's insulting to me that they're trying to use the word holistic to talk about this. And while it's something that this this government, this, these, this shadow government, these people have been waging a war against in regard to medicine... For deck for centuries. You know I mean, think again about Rockefeller. Rockefeller and Carnegie are the ones that created, that pushed, that, that, that create, let's just say they created the Flexner Report. They drove it. They made everything happen, which then drove our country in the early 1900s into a petrochemical medical system, which we can see what that did. Now we're all far sicker. We're all far heavier. We're all far worse off in every possible way. Right? Because holistic and homeopathy, homeopathy is the way to go. And we're going to find that out one day, way down the line, and be like, man, I can't believe you listened to these governments. Rockefeller himself used a homeopathy, 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 how do you, that's interesting. He they used a homeopathy doctor till the day he died. Lived to 95 back in the, back in the, early, in the mid 1900s. Makes sense. Anyway, I, I just I don't know why that point bothered me so much, but with this holistic approach, the data analytic team is able to predict the onset of the physical symptoms before they occur. Again, so they're going to come to your door and say, hey, you have to come with us for your safety because your ring just told us that you're going to get sick. That's, that is exactly what this is. Now, sure, you may actually be getting sick, but for those that people out there who are aware of how much they've lied about everything that's been happening... Why in the world would you allow them to do this now? Making a profit motive to put COVID-19 where they don't belong. People who die with it instead of from it. People who just aren't, who simply are diagnosed visually because of their symptoms and who are put on a ventilator and die and get put down as COVID-19 when they were never even tested, right? I mean, it's unreal what we've seen. By the way, which, you know, was it like nine, was it upwards of 90% of people on these, on these ventilators over 60 die, but they keep doing it. Anyway, watch th this is the actual this is on, this is on their website. This is what they want you to see it as. And this is horrifying to me. Wearable devices for sharing, sensing, excuse me. Oh, well look at that. You have a problem apparently stemming from your crotch or or your stomach, I guess, the line, and it shoots off into the cloud. I mean just real quick, look at what it's saying here. Automatic get that oh, That's weird. I want to get the writing off of there. There you go. Automatic and sensory nervous system, sleep, functional, cognitive, RNI, holistic, integrated neuro monitoring. I mean, guys, this is just ridiculous stuff. Look, so you've got your phone, your ring. I mean, let's look at what they're showing you. Your phone, ring, watch. All these are trackable wearable devices that are sending your data on real time back to a cloud that's monitoring your health. Now, in a world where everybody is completely at the best intentions and all they want to do is help you, I mean, I still wouldn't do it in that world. But the point is that that's the idea they're trying to present. That, oh, it's all for you. It's all for your health. We're doing it for you. And 
I can't, I can't even, I, it would take me the rest of my lifetime to sit here and list off all of the times that these very people, and I'm talking about literally the people behind this, have lied to you in these same ways throughout history, going back as far as you want to go for their own benefit. Solving problems through science. Oh, remember, here's that picture. The point is that this is this we're gonna we're gonna do a study to predict whether or not this and here's your here's your tracking ring, right? And that's what it became. Lovely. Now I hope you'll go through this more because this stuff's very very alarming, but this is real. This is really happening, and the whole idea is that this is supposed to be monitoring you around the clock, twenty four seven, and authority figures are going to get to use that. Now, that, think about even from the idea of outside of the idea of a pandemic. Think about how crazy we are about our, and rightly so, about our privacy right now, right? Data is the new oil, as James Corbett keeps putting it, and he's right. Data is the most profitable thing in the world today. And you know what you can do with data? You can literally change the world in nefarious ways, which is what's been happening, right? You can predict things. You can decide things for people. You can literally, you can, right now, based on the, uh, the the data they have on people, I've seen studies on this. They can pretty much predict what most people will be doing with their day, down to pretty damn specific things, based on your data that you've been pumping into Facebook and Twitter and Google and YouTube for the last 35 years, day in and day out, where you go, how long you're there, everything. And add to that now your biometrics, how you how you feel, how hot you are, right? How uncomfortable you are, your, your mental state. Think about what that will do. I mean, the, the point where they might just be creating complete replicas of people. This is horrifying. Of course, I'm crazy for saying this, just like I was crazy for telling you it was going to happen years ago, right? We're crazy. We're all crazy. Just go back to sleep. But guys, it's happening right now. Not the ring. That's also happening. Not, not like it's happening and it's about to be coming. No, this is already here. And this is what I'm trying to show people. How to check if your iPhone is secretly a COVID or coronavirus tracker. I recommend all of you do this right now. Take out your phones. Very simple. Go on your phone. Go to privacy. And then go to health. If you see this under health, it's already there. Now, it does say when enabled, iPhone can exchange random IDs with other devices using Bluetooth. This enables an app to notify you if you if uh, if you may have been exposed to COVID-19. Now, remember what the point of this article is and what a lot of people are saying is that they didn't have a choice, that their phone weirdly was like unavailable for a half a day. And then all of a sudden it came back on. And this was there or they had automatic updates turned off and it updated anyway. Right? That's what I'm hearing this from all across the board right now. So the point is that it was never your choice. Now, what it's saying right now is that this is essentially something that's on your phone that will then notify you if you come within contact of someone else who may be sick or whatever. Right? And I'll think about what the webbing that that had, the kind of contact tracing web that that shows them. If this is an active thing, they've just mapped everybody across the planet. Think how crazy that is, or at least in locations where phones are prevalent. But realize that if they were able to put this on your phone without you agreeing to it, let's not pretend they can't just turn it on without you agreeing to it. That's where this is. And it's already there. For all those out there looking right now and you're seeing it on your phone, I'm sorry. Because that, that's it's it, You need to realize what that means. That you're in a place where something like that is happening. And it's not just a hypothetical where, oh, it's okay. I'm not going to make it. I'm not going to force it on you. Right? Just like even Dershowitz says. Right? And that interview he had, the disgusting person that he is. Said, well, first you offer it to them for, for, you know, free or for, you know, it's your choice. And then once we isolate the ones who are refusing, then we focus on them and make them take it. For everyone's safety, of course. It's happening right now. Yeah, right, somebody's in the comments and add droid too. I mean, that, that's what it says down here when you look at the, I, I was going to mention this as somebody said, and just, this is just their opinion, but think about what he's saying. Did your phone act up when no service a few days ago? What if I told you they secretly added COVID-19 trackers? It's there. Awake yet? A similar setting has been installed on Android phones. Yep, it's on mine too. It's all happening, guys. They're tracking. I mean, th this is what's so crazy is they've always been tracking you, right? I mean, they've always been doing it. All this is is a specific coronavirus version of that tracking. So for all those that are thinking this is, oh my God, this is so crazy. What's well, already been there? This is just you seeing what's already been happening. That's what we need to wake up to. 
Now, one point more on, on financial stuff before I finish with some foreign policy. I just, this is exactly what I've been telling you from the beginning. And it's just, and it's, Trump will stand up and say one thing, or Pelosi or Biden will stand up and say one thing, and everybody who supports them will suddenly just ignore the reality of the situation because they're partisan, because they've chosen to ignore their logic to support a party. And that's what's so frustrating. In this case, it's exactly what we said was happening. And both the Democrats and the Republicans from within the two-party illusion are both responsible. Remember, when I say this, it doesn't mean that there are not Republicans or Democrats or liberals and conservatives. They exist. These people believe that in themselves. The reality is it's an illusion because those parties aren't really what they think they are. It's the Uniparty, right? It's one group. It's the, it's the actual. And what, this is what's so funny about the people who think Trump's fine in the deep state. It's all the same thing. Right? They're all the ele unelected power. These people are the, the political puppet show that keeps you invested while the actual people are pulling the strings everywhere else. And this is just one more example of that. This is exactly what we said. This was one part of a multifaceted, a lot of moving parts, massive bailout. The largest transfer of wealth in American history. Today, the, the government is an awful capital allocator news. Trillions of dollars is stimulus money has apparently been doled out with little to no oversight. At the same time, politicians on both sides of the aisle are scrambling to establish order in the form of various oversight panels, right? You know, that thing that they do after they put the money out, because that totally makes sense, right? If they cared even in the slightest about any kind of oversight about the money and where it would go, they would have done this before, right? And not fired the guy who was in his entire job was to make sure this didn't happen. Because what happened was the money went out to whoever asked for it, which was predominantly big business. Your money, once again, was stolen from you and given to the very people who didn't deserve it. The very people that they already been bailing out. The very people that probably turned around and got more money from Trump anyway, or whoever the president would have been in the moment, right? They turned around and said, federal government, we need more money, like Boeing and all the rest. I wonder if Boeing also took money from these small business loans. Guess we'll never get to know because they're not keeping track. In fact, it says it was found that some of the oversight bodies responsible for tracking the money are, quote, barely functional. This comes after $2 trillion in stimulus cash has been doled out. $2 trillion. Do you realize what that could do? $2 trillion alone could save pretty much every small business in this country. Now, that may be a little bit of hyperbole, but just think about you break it up. Think about it, you break that down into $50,000 loans. Yeah, it's a lot. And you give that to all the small businesses. I mean, right, there are people right this moment. My family has not gotten their check. It's, it's a joke. And of course, all the supporters from either side will defend one side or the other while not listening to the data and the facts that I'm putting forward. This is happening. You were robbed. Republican and Democrat alike, you were robbed. And they didn't care. And you could call it incompetence, but how often, how, how, many, how long are we going to continue to be like, oh, he just screwed up? Or they just screwed up? Or it was somebody, it was a Democrat, or it was somebody, they did say it was politics, there was somebody down the line. It's not Trump's fault. It's always the leader's fault, guys. That's what real leaders do. You take responsibility for your administration, right? When you're the leader of this country, when you are the president of this country, you own it. I don't mean the country. I mean, you own what happens. You own the problems. You own things that have you, you, you just, you say, I'm going to own this. Even if you didn't do it, right? Even if somebody acted on their own and made some bad decision, you're the leader. So you step up and you own it. Let's not pretend it's only Trump. I, mean, I, I could point to a thousand other so-called leaders around the world that do the same thing. They equivocate and they sidestep and they blame everybody else and they point. It's, it's embarrassing. But that's why we're seeing things happen the way they are right now because these Western countries are struggling. And then, by the way, it's not just Western countries, but that's what I'm talking about right here. But the point is $2 trillion gone. It says that's exactly what's taking place. Meanwhile, a special inspector general, Brian Miller, who, had, who has only been sworn in recently and is already facing questions from Democrats on his ability to be independent. But remember, guys, that they fired the guy. I'm trying to remember his name all of a sudden. Uh, yes, it, it was... I forget his name now. Dang it. But the, the, basically, it's Elizabeth Warren, which, by the way, is also part of the problem, says, we've seen giant public companies scoop up relief meant for small businesses. An inspector general fired. Promises made to muzzle independent oversight. Right? Do you remember what this, this happened before this started? The inspector general was removed. The very person who was supposed to be stopping this. 
Now you can ask yourself, maybe they just are so so lost and, and scrambling and just kind of trying to play catch up that they don't know what's going on. Or they did it because they wanted money to go to their people that they wanted it to go to. This is a perfect cover. Incompetence can cover for $2 trillion bailouts to the very companies who you already planned to bail out before this ever started. How disgusting is that? Realize that that $2 trillion that went to people that don't deserve it, that don't need it, could have literally saved your family's existence. It could have saved your job. It could have saved your small business. It could have saved your livelihood. But don't worry. They're going to give you a new, a new job making masks and a plant for 3M, and we'll all be good again. It's frustrating. But to end, something even more frustrating. The annexation stuff is still going forward. And I wanted to point this out just because it's, we need to realize, I mean, this is Jordan's king saying, we do not agree with this, right? Netanyahu is supposed to need their approval for in regard to the Jordan Valley. They had agreements before. Jordan pulled back on it and said, no, sorry, we're done. And Netanyahu just said, okay, we don't care. We're going to take it anyway, right? Because he's totally about a law and, and morals and, right? I mean, this, think of how obvious this is. You can, I mean, you can listen to their lie about trying to having a, a right to the land or, you know, God gave them the land, we're gonna pay, even though that is obviously not real. Because we know that in actual Judaism, they are supposed to wait for the Messiah to come back before it happens. And guess what? That hasn't happened yet. So Zionists just ignore that part. Isn't that convenient? This is where all the, the true Orthodox Jews in, in Israel will call them out for it. You know, that's why you'll have the people standing up and saying this is the reality, that we don't support this because it's not Judaism, right? Like, I'm, a, I'm an anti-Zionist for saying that, but I guess all of those Jews also saying it are anti or, excuse me, anti-Semites, <laughs> right? I mean, it, it's just ridiculous. Not to mention the fact that the whole word Semite is completely bastardized and doesn't even mean what they tell you it does. Palestinians are Semites, but it can get, die into this whole conversation. It's all lies and illusions. If Jordan's king is saying you can't have it, Netanyahu is not supposed to be able to just take it. But he's trying because he doesn't care about the law. But he, Jordan's king is pushing Congress himself to oppose these annexations because they're illegal. Because everybody everywhere except people who are invested in the profit behind this and the control behind this are willing to acknowledge that. Even their allies today, even the people in the EU. Boris Johnson just said it's against the rule and then have gotten an accident, weirdly enough. But the point is that this is clear. But Netanyahu, guess what? Guess what he just said? He will never recognize Palestine. How does that even make sense? Right? You realize that recognizing Palestine as a state was literally part of the deal of the century, the so-called deal of the century that Netanyahu signed, that Trump was a part of? <laughs> he just goes, and not only did he step up like a week later and start annexing territory that was supposed to be for the Palestinians, he's just straight up going, nah, not going to do it. I'm never going to do that. And guess what? That's what I told you. That's what I kept telling you. He's always said that. I've always said, we're never going to do that. So why did you listen to people that told you otherwise? You can literally see videos right up until today where they say it over and over. We will never do that. And yet your own politicians, Trump included, will come to you and say, here, it's all going down. Peace for everyone. And you believe it? I mean, it's just, it's, it is irrational. It's insane. If you, I mean, but if you're going to ignore what he is literally saying, then I don't know what to do for you. He will not recognize Palestine because he never wanted to, and they never will. He used Trump's deal to take what he could from it in the moment and just stepped all over Trump in the process. It means pretty damn clear to me that he is in control of the situation here. Look at everything Trump has done since this has started. Every single illegal thing. Given them the Golan Heights, illegal. Allow them to continue annexation, illegal. I mean, I, I'm not, I, I don't need to get pulled down in this conversation. You, you guys know me by now. I will get, I will continue to get frustrated about this. I don't want to take too long. This is the reality. And it's just damn time that we see that the Palestinians are, are one of the most oppressed people on the planet, if not the, you know, people like this like in Yemen in the same way, people like Netanyahu and Trump and everyone else stepping on the necks of people that are suffering more than anybody. Seems kind of apt, wouldn't you say? <laughs> Excuse me. And just so you got, just in case you weren't sold, that was legitimate. Here is um, actually. Oh, see here. I can. I forgot to. I forgot what it said. I looked at it earlier. The coalition chairman and Lukid party chairman 
saying, we will never recognize a Palestinian state. The prime minister announced yesterday at the faction meeting that in each constellation, the government and the Knesset will not recognize the principle of establishing a Palestinian state. The plan, which is essentially the application of sovereignty to all locations without any Jew being evicted from his home in a succession of sovereignty while maintaining the duties in his historic plan is an opportunity not to be missed. <laughs> okay, yay, right? But guess what? You, the one thing that should stand out is we will not recognize. So there's no deal. This is an insult to anybody who actually cares about what this was supposed to be. It's unreal. But as always, guys, they don't care. They don't care that you see it. They don't care. Because I guess if they can tell you to go in your home, put your put your mask on, stay quiet, quarantine, they can do whatever the hell they want. Yeah, they're going to get outraged from people like us. But if just enough people are pliable enough and willing to just take what they're given well they know they have enough to get by so all I need from people out there is just to see this and stand against it stand up have some courage you're not alone we all see it too stand up stand for the people who can't stand for themselves that's what real courage is that's what real leaders do The last thing I want to show you guys before I go today was another great article put up by Derek Bros in regard to the fluoride trial. I wanted to do go more into this, but unfortunately they delayed the ruling. So I will want to follow up on this more when something officially changes one way or the other, but just a quick breakdown. It does seem as Derek agrees the judge is seemingly at least seemingly on our side as it were right seemingly aware of what they continue to say calling them out right asking about I mean, basically as you go, i recommend you read this article for yourself and, and check out his tweets and he's been following this every moment throughout this trial but realizing that as it says in he's in bold the judge acknowledged that it is undisputed that fluoride can cause harm to the human brain and its neurological hazard and it's a neurological hazard. But he goes on to talk about a lot of different things in regard to how their experts from the EPA are being f literally funded by people and but that have a vested interest in one side of the argument. I mean, it's a lot of good stuff. And it seems that in my, if I had to guess about why there was this delay, is that the judge, if I want to believe he is on our side, does not want the EPA. Basically, the EPA is going off, or they're going off studies from like 2016. And there's been a lot that's happened since then. So the judge is saying, both of you go out and reference these studies, look at these studies, come back in 90 days, and we'll, we'll, deal, we'll deal with it then. So I think in a way, if, I, if I'm being you know, wishful thinking maybe, the judge may just want to make sure that they can't cir kind of circumvent his ruling later down the line, right? So if, they can, if he can make sure they can't come back and be like, we didn't even talk about these new studies. Hopefully. That's what I'm hoping for. The bottom line is the information coming out of this trial is very clear. Fluoride's bad for you. It's dangerous. And it's and, and people that are telling you it's safe are being paid off. That's what I'm taking from everything that I've been seeing. And it seems pretty damn clear. Read it for yourself. Look at it for yourself, guys. But all we can do is fight for change. I just plead with you not to give up. It's only It only gets more difficult before it gets better. So just stand with me and let's make it better. I love you guys. Thank you for being here. I don't, I'm, I might be trying to just kind of lay up for the rest of the weekend in hopes that I can make it back in my chair by Monday. Who knows what's going to happen over the weekend. Either way, I'm still here. I love you guys, as always. Question everything. Come to your own conclusions. Stay vigilant. يصنعوا فيروس وينشروه في العالم بش الشركات الرأسمالية تحصل أموال الأمصال ما لا تباع الدواء لا يباع إذا كانت هي تباع بثمن غالي معناها تجارة اعلنوا قولوا الدواء مجاني الأمصال مجانية مش حتنتشر الفيروسات لأني خلقوا فيها بش يعملوا أمصال وبش تكسب منها الشركات الرأسمالية المصانع تشتغل بعد المخابرات